<laughs> Welcome everybody. Welcome to <laughs> Hello everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for Monster Chiller Thriller Wine 5. The 5th year of the Halloween special and uh got the set back together again. We got uh, some got some wines here to do. This is my favorite episode of the year to record. If you haven't told, can't tell by all the production that goes in on this. Um, <laughs> I, I just I just love doing the Halloween special. So it's past midnight. I seem to always do this really late at night, and um, we've got three wines to do. Um, they all are basically black bottles with black labels. So I already took some pictures of the, of the, of the uh, wines so you can at least see what they look like uh, because with how dark it is, you're really not going to uh, be able to tell. So we have, like I said, three wines. We have one white, two reds, and uh, I'm, just, I'm just too excited to do this. Um, so, uh, in about what, in about a week? from when I record this, but in about a week, I will be in Napa in Sonoma. I can't tell you how excited I am to do that. We've got six wineries lined up. Well, five definitely for sure. Waiting on the sixth winery. Hopefully I got all six. Uh, Thursday is gonna be my freestyle day. No, we're not doing American Picker style. It's a pretty good show if you haven't watched it. Uh, but that Thursday, I'm gonna go around, knock on some doors and say, what up, yo? And, uh, See, uh, see who uh, will invite me in to just kind of hang out and see what they're about and taste some wines and all that. Not worried about getting interviews. I'll have the equipment with me, but not really worried about it. Of course, all, well, yeah, the people watching the Halloween episode will be before Napa, so. Sorry, I got the sniffles all of a sudden. So, um, but anyway, uh, I'm real excited to get out for my first trip to Northern California. I've been to Southern California a few times, been to LA, uh, Ojai, Pasadena, yeah, you know, that's about it. Um, we're driving cross country. I got my, I got my, uh, my uh, equipment manager grip, uh, whatever, all the other, all the other uh, uh, film, you know, titles that you could think of for my father, Vinnie Crumbs. So uh, he's heading out there with me. He's going to be, you know, my, my crew. Uh, it'll be the first time I've actually had a crew. I'll be honest, of the 313 episodes, I pretty much set up everything, almost every single piece of equipment by, by myself on almost every single show. Yeah, anyway. Um, so anyway, so I'm gonna have that. So dad's going out there with me. Uh, like I said, we're doing five wineries for sure. I, I'm pretty sure I'll have a sixth winery. I'm kind of working on that still, ironing out the kinks uh, on Sonoma. I won't reveal where I'm gonna go uh, until I get there. And um, yeah, let's. Let's get into some wine. By the way, Horatio makes yet another appearance. Um, so uh, we are going to do, now this is, now even though it's actually not dark in the room um, because the green screen is kind of a backlit and it's kind of dark here. Um, I took pictures of all these and I took, wrote notes, but I actually, believe it or not, I can read everything on here. Um, so let me just get going here. Got the, uh, the usual goblet. Give myself a nice healthy pour. We're not doing any kind of spitting today. Um, so this is the 2012 um, Mosul, Mosul Land, Moseland? Moseland Cat Series Black Cat Riesling. Um, and bought this. Are you friggin' kidding me? You, yeah, you know what? I left the, I thought I had all the prices. Thought I had all the prices uh, with me. So, you know, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go into my crypt and get the receipt. This is kind of funny, I've never had to do this. Not on the, uh, not on this episode. It's been a while. So, we're gonna go around the camera. <laughs> so, while you're waiting for me to get back, we'll kind of talk about the Mosul land. So they were, they've been making wine in the Mosul for a very, very, very long time. Um, hundreds of years, in fact. 
but there was a cooperative that got together in 1969 and they created the Moseland uh, Wine Company. So, um, as soon as I find the receipt, because I just saw it today. Anyway, so they, uh, they created a cooperative and so they've been making wine since then. They've actually grown to one of the largest winemakers in the world of Riesling and just pretty much wine in general. So, uh, and of course you've seen the black cat all over the place. Um, it's really a uh, pretty iconic wine. So, what's that? What? What? Ah! Okay, we're good. Did you see that? Sorry about that. Had a little ghoul in here. So anyway, so the Moseland um, was list is twelve ninety nine. I paid ten ninety nine for it at World Market, and uh, <laughs> so uh, anyway, like I said, they've been they're one of the largest winemakers, um, world's largest Riesling producers and marketers in the world. So let's check it out. Like I said, um, you've probably seen the black cat for a long time. It's, uh, it's a gimmick, especially Halloween. But they have other cat series. I think they have a blue and a gold. I don't really see those too much. I see the black all the time. All right, so uh, long-time viewers of the Halloween episode knows they, no, I can't really swirl the wine too much in this cup because it <laughs> does that. A lot of breath because you know how to go up and down the stairs to the upstairs crypt, by the way. All right, so on the nose, you know, this is very, very aromatic wine, by the way. I mean, I could really smell it even while I was going into the crypt. Um, it's crisp, refreshing, um, kind of very citrusy. Um, very much lemon lime, not like lemon, not just lime, very lemon lime. Um, I was doing some judging for the San Antonio Rodeo uh, this past week, and one of the guys said he, he said he smelled and tasted Sprite, and it was wine. So anyway, not that it's a bad description, because you do get that lemon type of thing. And that's pretty much it on that, you know. It does smell very clean, uh, crisp, so it's got a good nose to it. I mean, it's a $13, 10 to $13 bottle of wine, so this is not super cheap, and it's just kind of in a gimmicky bottle. Well, first of all, uh, this is one of the Qualitats vines, so it's not, it's, um, it's the entry level for quality on the quality wine level. Um, it's not one of the later picked wines. It's got a little bit of sweetness to it. Um, I don't really think it's necessarily residual sugar, but real quick to try to find the alcohol on here, 10%. So there's gotta be a little bit of residual sugar on there. Um, it's not super sweet. It's actually kind of refreshing. Um, and I would say it is kind of Sprite-like. Um, you've got that lemon, you know, lemon-lime uh, flavor to it. Um, it's got a hint of sweetness to it. And uh, now I can totally see, you know, pairing this with your Smarties, your Sweet Tarts, that kind of stuff. Those, uh, those, um, those chewy sweet tarts, remember those? Um, no, no candy this year, I did it that one year, had a lot of fun with it. But I can see like that really acidic, and it's got some good acid to it. Um, it's not high acid, I just call it a medium, medium plus acid, my mouth is really watering. Um, you know what, it, it's, I know it's a gimmicky wine, it's Halloween, but if you're going to the Halloween party and you wanna bring a white wine, instead of a heavy dark wine, dark red wine, and you want something that's got, it's gonna be kind of fun, um, this is gonna be kind of fun. I mean, it really, it really is, um, 
know, it's a pretty decent wine for what it is. Would I buy it outside of Halloween? You know what? Why not? It's 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 still a fun little little gimmick. You know, it, it's not a bad wine, but I could see I could see kind of it, it the Sprite Seven Up type of uh, flavor profile is pretty is a pretty good accurate a pretty accurate um, pretty accurate description. It's not exact, it's so accurate and exact. Okay, it's reminiscent of a Sprite or Seven Up. Um, you know, you you could really do a spritzer with this. I mean, it's not sparkling, but you could do you know a white wine spritzer, um, a white wine cooler. You could really mix it up. You could use it as as a base wine for wine cocktails. Um, I'm not really a fan of wine cocktails, you know, because to me you should be just drinking the wine. But if the wine isn't top 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 quality, then you know it's like using house vodka for a mixed drink. All right. Why would you use super, super, super premium vodka for mixed drink anyway? Or scotch or gin. Why don't you just drink it straight? Or on the rocks. Maybe a little water. It is not too, too bad. I was very, um, very impressed. There we go. Sitting on my little trailer trailer trail here all right so the next one just happens to be whatever I picked up all right so this is another world market find uh, of course and uh, I go every year there so I think total wine does a little bit of uh, um, Halloween theme so I might do them next time but um, so you know I was really looking hard for something that I've never done before um, it, the, either the name or the label at least, you know, had some kind of spooky Halloween-ish type, um, type feel to it. So I happened upon this wine, it's called Besieged. And um, it is a, a blend of Old Vine California heritage varieties. varieties. Um, so, Let's, uh, let's get a nice little healthy pour in there. Get the, not that you can see the label too much. You might be able to see. I got a little bit of light illuminating on there. So, Besiege is from Ravenswood. It's a 2013 Sonoma County. Uh, so, all the, all the grapes are, are um, sourced from all over Sonoma. Um, it's, got, it's got a lot of grapes in it. And they do mean a lot. All right, so it's got Petit Syrah, Carignan, Zinfandel, Syrah, Barbera, Alicante Bouchette. Haven't had one of those in a long time. And Movedra. Now, um, which one of those wines has red juice? Give me a few seconds. Figure it out. We read those again. Petit Syrah, Carignan, Zin, Syrah, Barbera, Alicante Bouchette, and Movedra. Figure it out yet? Ding, 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 ding. If you guess Alicante Bouchette, you're correct. It's one of the five tincture, I think they're five, tincture grapes that use, are used for wine making that actually have red juice. So um, definitely used for a color, you know, add extra color to it. Um, that's all I really have about it. Oh, and, and the label said uh, the winemaker was besieged by, by ravens or birds. Under a threatening sky, besieged by rain clouds, lightning uh, glinting in the hills, winemaker Joel Peterson worked alone to collect grapes destined for one of his debut wines. As he worked, ravens uh, cackled from above, but instead of being harbingers of doom, they brought him good fortune, becoming the totem for his winery. Hey, it was a good story. And, 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 I'm going to guess there's at least some kind of truth to that. So, um, anyway, I'm, I'm really excited about trying this. I mean, it's got all kinds of, uh, all kinds of grapes to it. So, uh, let's check it out. Oh, bought it again, Chris. I said World Market. Um, it is, it lists for $17.99. I got it for $14.99. That's part of their World Explorer program. So, 
you'll get some discounts here and there. So all kinds of stuff going on in the nose. Um, it's a bit um, butterscotch caramel. Let's see if I can get a little bit of, little bit. There you go. It's kind of spicy. Um, you know, so spices, dark fruits. I don't get a lot of bright red fruits to it. Darker kind of fruits, so blackberry more than anything else. And I, I mean, I really get like spices, you know, that type of spicy aroma off of it more than necessarily the fruit, but there's a good amount of fruit, black fruit, uh, blackberry, dark fruit, that type of stuff in there. Okay, on the palate, very fruit forward. Um, kind of, kind of jammy. Um, kind of, you know, it's almost like a Fig Newton type of um, fruitiness to it. You know, the, the, the fruit inside of the Fig Newton um, or some type of pastry type of thing. Um, not that I'm getting the pastry sensation, but that kind of, you know, processed fruit. Um, it's tasty. Okay, so I'm not saying, I'm not trying to slam it. Just trying to say that I've got that, that fruity, fruit roll up, um, Fig Newton type of fruit to it. It's also very, I would call it brambly. Got some wood characteristics to it. Um, not just wood, oak barrel characteristics, but some kind of woodsy. Um, I mean, with the story going involved, I could really see these twisted vines and a dark type of environment out in the vineyard. It's dark. You can really smell the vines, the, the wood uh, of, of that, um, just kind of twisted. Um, it's got a medium plus on the tannin. Um, the finish is, I'd say, medium finish. So, and, and, but it's a little bit, feels a little bit hot. Not too, too terribly hot, but it feels a little hot. You can kind of feel a little bit of burn going down. This is definitely a wine that you need food with. It's, it's pretty big, it's pretty bold. I mean, I, told, I know I said it was kind of medium bodied or medium tannins, but there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of flavor to it. Um, again, the, the darker fruits, it's, I'm getting really the, the black raspberries, but even just like, um, or blackberries, black, I mean, blackberries for days on this. Um, even a little bit of black raspberry, you know, just darker raspberries. Um, and I mean, it's, there's something else in there I really wanted to, I keep, I keep tasting it and then I keep forgetting what it is because it's, a, it's, a, it's like a, an initial taste. Just kind of a sharpness to it, I think, and it's because it's the acidity. Um, it's it's high acid, so your mouth's gonna water. I mean, you really need food with this with this wine. Um, I mean, you could you could have some type of you know hearty meal. This could be definitely a winter type wine. You got some you got some pot roast or stew, um, that kind of that kind of meal with it. Um, you know, roasted meat. Um, the, the flavor, you, you don't, you're not getting the roasted meat flavor or savoriness from it, but the, the fruitiness to it would be like having like a, like a, like a, um, like a fruit sauce, like a, some type of sauce with, with the, uh, with the meats. So, you know, I think, I think, uh, 
I think it would go really well with, with some type of uh, stewed meat, um, roasted meat, that kind of thing. Um, maybe even a little bit of barbecue if you had like a sweeter barbecue sauce. Had some of that today. Um, it's funny because the place I went to, I mean, I, I thought the barbecue sauce used to be a little bit spicier. And I asked and like, well, yeah, it used to be, but that was like years ago and they changed. So I just haven't had barbecue there in a long time. So I kind of forgot what the, uh, I kind of forgot how the barbecue sauce tasted, but I caught on real quick that the mac and cheese ta uh, tasted different and they did. They changed it like two weeks ago. I was the first person to notice. Anyway, um, at least, at least tell that manager about it. So um, anyway, um, yeah, I mean, you definitely need to have fruit, food with this. Um, if you were gonna have oh, like, like, like chocolate with like, like cherry or raspberry, and, you know, like, you know, filling, that would be awesome with this. Because not that I'm getting a lot of chocolate out of the wine, but it would complement, it would give you like that cherry filled or that raspberry filled, like dark cherry, raspberry filled, blackberry filled, chocolate, or even if you had like some type of orange, you know, like a Grand Marnier chocolate, oh, that would be the best. That'd be adult candy for you kids, Grand Marnier candy. Um, or some type of liqueur candy. Now that FLM from Vegas, do they still make that anymore? I don't know. My mother used to like be all about uh, the FLMs back in the what, 80s. Every once in a while you go to Vegas and bring back FLMs. I, I thought they were great. They're they're really uh, pretty fantastic chocolates, but I think they only made them in Vegas. You only could get them in Vegas, so um, I don't know. I don't know if they're made anymore. But anyway, um, for eighteen bucks, I mean, I, I'd say it's a good buy. Um, I'd say you know it's it's something that you could buy with confidence that you're probably going to like, but you do have that food with it. This is not a sit around, watch the latest Vincent Price horror flick, um, and you know with uh, with your uh, guy or girl and uh, just drink at the party at the Halloween party sure why not all right so now we're gonna do the third wine here so this is apothic dark now I've done apothic already the, the apothic red um, I think they have an apothic white I haven't I, I, I don't see it very often but I think they have an apothic white but the apothic dark now it's like, you know what? It's got the whole gothic lettering to it. It's definitely Halloween-ish. It's a limited release. Hmm, coincidence? I think not. Uh, California wine, 2013, uh, paid, well, it lists for $10.99. I paid $9.99, um, for it. So um, now this is, a combination of Petit Syrah, Terral Dago, and Cabernet Sauvignon. Now, Terral Dago is a wine that's from the northeast part of Italy, uh, or grape. Um, so you don't see a lot of that here in the States. Um, you'll, Italian wine, you'll see it. Uh, and it's called Apothic, so it, it comes from the Apotheca. These are wine vessels from the 13th century. Um, so that's how they stored their wines in the 13th century. And the grapes are mostly sourced from Lodi. Let's see, um, is there anything really back here? Um, not really. There's nothing like story-wise to, to give you an idea of why it's called what it is. I mean, it, kind of, it talks about the tasting notes, so. All right, so let's check it out. All right. You having fun? I'm having fun. I don't know about you, but I'm having tons of fun. All right, so um, okay. Got a little bit of swirl. Yeah, I didn't spill anything. All right, there is a bit of medicine quality to it. So, a little concerning on that. But, it's not that much. But it, it, it smells like hard candies. So, 
I've talked about like those hard candy, those like hard candy raspberry type of things. Um, so it's like, it's kind of that candy shell to it. But when I first put my nose into the glass, it was like a, it's like a chocolate candy bar with fruit. So I mean, we're talking about the, you know, with the last wine, so that might've still been in my head. Um, so, but I don't, it's not, well, let's try it again. Yeah, I mean, I really get like this chocolate and, and raspberry, blackberry type of um, uh, flavor to it. Uh, the other day, you know, w the, the place I work at I had a rep come in and taste me on some wines and he had some like rat, you know, dark, dark fruit and put it on a little bit of chocolate. This is kind of that, that kind of that sensation. And, and I can really smell, you know, it's like almost like a milk chocolate really with this rather than what I was tasting was like a chocolate brownie. Almost, I almost seem like I get a little bit of mint to it. Interesting, almost like a eucalyptus type of mint, all right? All right let's, let's check it out. Hmm. Well, it is kind of minty. Um, it really is very much the palate is very much like the uh, like the nose, kind of chocolate, kind of minty. A little bit um, medium tannins, you know, definitely, definitely dark fruits, um, blackberries, ch uh, chocolate, a little, like I said, a hint of mint, like a almost like a, um, you know, honestly, it's almost almost like a Vicks vapor rub or like that type of like menthol, menthol. That's the word I'm looking for. Almost like a menthol, which I don't know if that's a good thing or not. You know, I don't know. I mean, it's not a, it's not a terribly bad wine, it, 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 at all. It's it's not. Um, it's ten dollar bottle of wine. Um, I think that that minty, almost almost menthol. It's not quite menthol, but uh, that that type of quality is. I don't know. Definitely, what I definitely don't see having this with like, like the the last red wine having some good meats with it. This this is a this is a wine. I think this this really I feel is almost like a party wine. It, it's it's very much a party wine. You're gonna have chips, dips, chains, whips, typical teenage party. Okay, um, and I could really see this being a Halloween party wine. It's 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 I wouldn't say easy drinking, but it's not like too too heavy. You're probably gonna pair. You know, you're probably gonna have you know like typical party food, probably have cookies and candy because it's Halloween. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend with the caramel apple. Um, it might work with the caramel part of things. You get some of those Brock's caramels. That would work with this. Yeah, that would work. That would be cool. Um, so, I mean, if you, I can see this as, as, as a party wine, as in general, but especially this time of year, you got the Halloween thing going on, you got, you know, you know. Honestly, you can, this could even almost, almost be a Thanksgiving wine. You got like the cranberry sauce. Maybe, maybe, but definitely if you're a Halloween party, you could do it's ten bucks. Buy a couple of those bottles. People have a good time with it. It's pothic. It's dark. No, oh, pothic dark. Yeah. But I mean, it's got a dark label. It's really kind of cool looking. Um, it, it's, it does it. It's not as gimmicky as vampire wine um, or Dios de la Muerto or whatever, like, you know, one of those types of wines that definitely is only made for Halloween. Um, this is probably, you know, I'm going to guess that in six months you will not find this on the shelf. Okay. Um, it's not because it was a gangbuster sold out. My guess is that. 
they're gonna put, they put it out for Halloween, they try to get a couple more months of, of sales out of it, and then whatever they don't sell, I don't know if they're, I don't know if they can or not, I don't, I don't really know what the laws in the states are, if they can retrieve the wine and, 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 re, and relabel it, probably not, but I, I can see, you know, in two, three months, if uh, a store's um, uh, supply of Apothic Dark has not been already sold out, it's that they're going to try to sell it. But you never know. It says limited release. That makes me think that it's, it's really meant for Halloween. And they only made it, they made just enough for how much they think they're going to sell the Halloween. So yeah. I don't know. I mean, I've had some, I've had some Halloween episodes that were, you know, everything was knocked out of the park. Others that were like, okay, this one was pretty decent for the most part. Um, definitely, I think the Besieged, um, and I think the reason why the Besieged is probably the best of the three wines as far as just, not just I like it the best, but I think it's the best quality wine, um, besides that it's the most expensive, is that it's, it's, it appears to be a serious wine or a wine that was seriously put out, not because it's Halloween, it's just that they, was a, they thought it was a cool label, a cool story. Um, I picked it because of that. It's Halloween. You know, this is a wine probably is going to be in the shelf six, eight months from now. Um, and it's, you know, it's might even be the next vintage, but it's just not something that they, they hold for Halloween to put out. My feeling is they don't. Apothic Dark, my feeling is they, they hold it till they, they do a September release, sell it till the end of the year so they get a good four months worth of sales out of it. And then whatever happens, happens. And of course, the Black Cat's Black Cat. I mean, it. Again, very much Halloween-ish. Is that it? I guess that's it. You know, the cauldron isn't, uh, there isn't a whole bunch of, uh, it's not too wet there. Sometimes a little cauldron, it's so, so you know what this is. This, I got this at Walmart, what, three years ago now? Um, and it's just water in there, and there's like a mister that's inside and little colors. I love it, it's really cool. It beats having to go find dry ice and make sure I use the dry ice very quickly. Um, yeah, it beats it beats doing the dry ice. So, um, cause I tried that that one one year. I tried the dry ice, but I bought it like a week before the episode, and it was all evaporated. Who knew that it evaporates in the freezer? I knew that. I just forgot about it. Um, but yeah, really cool. I don't know if they sell them anymore, but it was at Walmart three years ago. Um, just break it out once a year and just water, you just rinse it out, it's all good. Um, so yeah, what else? Um, that's really it. I just wanna thank everybody for stopping by, uh, having some fun with me for the Halloween episode. Um, like I said, I'll be up in Napa the first week of November. Um, the 3rd through the 7th I will be in Napa and uh, just, well, we arrive on the 3rd. We're not going to really see anything on the 3rd. But the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th I'll actually be, you know, checking out wineries and then hitting, hitting San Fran after that. Um, and then we're going to head back up on Sunday. We're going to head up to Petaluma and to go see This Week in Tech. Now, if anyone wonders where the inspiration for the show came came from, um, obviously Gary Vaynerchuk's Wine Library TV. Now, Gary never did this, so I mean, like I said, it's an inspiration, not a copy of it. Um, but the other thing about what I try to do with, with um, production and using all the Skype stuff and all that kind of thing, that comes from Leo Laporte. Uh, this Week in Tech, uh, used to be on a channel called Tech TV. Before that, it was called ZD TV for Ziff Davis. Um, so I've been watching him for a very long time. He uh, once Comcast bought um, Tech TV, and they kind of was just we'll just call it like it is screwed everything up. Um, he, among other people, left or were fired or let go, whatever. Um, so he was part of that mass exodus of people over like a, a couple year period of time and he created his own tech, basically his own internet tech channel. So I'm hoping, I asked him to, I asked if I could be on the show. They never replied back to me, but I at least have tickets to, to 
be in the audience. So I'll have my 1337 wine shirt on. I'm hoping to at least get a picture with Leo and, and spend like two seconds with him. Um, John C. Dvorak, you better be on the show. I'm gonna send you an email. Make sure you're up there so you can be on the show. I can meet you in person. I've met Adam in person. Um, now I need to meet you in person. We can talk wine. Uh, anyway, if you don't know who John and Adam are, look them up. Anyway, um, I mean, I got my podcast license from them. So, uh, for $30. Or was it 33 $30. So, uh, anyway, uh, I'm looking forward to that. I've been, I've been kind of wanting an excuse to get up to Petaluma to watch This Week in Tech. Uh, it's no longer the cottage days, but that's cool. And uh, go up there, and then that sets a Sunday. And then Monday morning, bright and early, drive back to San Antonio, stop by, see some friends in Phoenix. Um, I'm hoping between now and then I will get a reply email for a winery in Arizona. I will not say who it is or what winery it is, but um, I'm really hoping that I'll be able to get this interview in, in, from an Arizona winery. If not, doesn't, it's okay, not, it's not gonna ruin the trip, uh, but it would be really cool to do this, to do this winery. Um, I mean, I'm driving through Arizona. I don't know when the next time I'm gonna be heading back there again. So uh, I'm hoping I'll probably send another follow-up email just to be kind of like, hey, we talked. Maybe we can do it. Um, let's see what else. Um, that's going to be it for that. What about the what about the episodes right after Halloween? So there probably will not be an episode on the tenth. I'm not recording anything between now and, and the time I leave, so there won't be any episode on the tenth. Um, I will hopefully start the Napa series, uh, Napa Sonoma series wineries, the following week, which that would be what the seventeenth. Of course. I'll have a um, I'll have a Thanksgiving episode, and of course I'll have a Christmas and New Year's episode. Um, we'll have six weeks worth of California episodes, so uh, that should take us into January, including the uh, all the other specials for the rest of the year, and then um, we'll go from there. Oh, I applied for the advanced course, so I'm hoping when I get back, a few days after I get back, I'll I'll know that I'm going up to Dallas next June to do the advanced sommelier course and then the following year, take my test and pass it. I think that's all the, that's all the uh, housekeeping for today. But again, I wanna thank everyone for stopping by. Had a lot of fun as usual making the Halloween episode. Hope you had a lot of fun watching it. Um, click the links below, find, more about, find out more about the wine. Come to the website to do that, all you TiVo people. By the way, Blueberry, you guys have been awesome. The, the, the viewer count has just skyrocketed since I went to the... Why did I not do this before? Back on iTunes, if you didn't remember that. Find me on TiVo. If uh, you were watching me on TiVo before and all this feed BS was going on and uh, I got dropped and blah, 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 blah. I'm back on TiVo. Find me there. Find me on Roku on iFood TV. Their iFood TV channel, the iWine channel on Roku. iTunes, YouTube. Let's see who else. That's all. And, and the website and the website and any podcatcher um, or any other thing that that blueberry uh, does for me uh, for the uh, distribution click the links above to friend me up hit the donate up to donate button over here value for value and we'll see everyone again next time in napa valley <laughs>